Well, Jesus is on the road to Easter, and we're going to follow along in Luke's Gospel. We read in Luke chapter 19, uh, from verse 28. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. He and his disciples have been heading towards Jerusalem for some time. This is to celebrate the Passover with him and his disciples on their way to the city as many people in the ancient Jewish world would have. The size of the city swelled at this time as people streamed from all over the Mediterranean to celebrate the Passover in Jerusalem. In verse 29, we, we see, as he approached Bethphage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent ahead two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and as you enter it, you will find a colt there, which no one has ever ridden, untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you're untying it, say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it, just as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? And they replied, The Lord needs it. Jesus here was preparing to enter the city, and he had choices about how he was going to do that. Was he someone who was entering the city leading a rebellion with an armed mob behind him? Was he someone who was coming on a chariot like the Roman emperors? Was he coming as a king? Well, certainly he was, but he was choosing to come as a certain type of king. In fulfillment of the prophet Zechariah in the Old Testament, Jesus was choosing to enter the city as God's king, the Messiah, the one who had been promised would deliver his people from their greatest enemy. Zechariah had said that such a king would arrive on a cult, and so Jesus makes that appropriate, makes that apparent to everyone that that's how he is entering the city because that's how he is to be considered the king whom God had promised. Verse 35 we read, they brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. And as he went along, the people spread their cloaks on the road. People have been following Jesus in this journey to Jerusalem. And those that are there, those who are supporters, are there to welcome this moment as the king arrives in his capital, in Jerusalem, the center of the, pe the kingdom of God's people. So there they welcome him, throwing their cloaks on the ground. And in Matthew's gospel, we read they cut branches off nearby trees and lay them on the ground as well. It's like uh, the welcome carpet, the red carpet uh, for Jesus as he enters the city, as they're declaring their allegiance to him as the king. Verse 37 we read, When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Now, what's interesting here in this scene is that Jesus isn't the one being praised. It's God who's being praised for what he has done in sending Jesus, the promised king, to be the king of God's people. They rightly recognize that it's God who is to be praised. Now, as their, develop, as their understanding develops over time, they will come to see that Jesus is God in the flesh. Therefore, it would not be inappropriate to praise Jesus, but only if they knew that Jesus was God. It is God who is due the praise. And so they praise God. They say these words in verse 38, we read, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Again, uh, are words given to us from the Old Testament in Psalm 118. And peace in heaven and glorious in the highest. They give their due praise to heaven, to God, that this moment has happened, this moment that they've been waiting for, for hundreds of years, since the last prophets, the people have waited in silence until John the Baptist came to say, this is the one, behold, the Lamb of God. And so now that king is arriving in his city and the people are there to welcome it. But not everyone. In verse 39 we read, and some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. The Pharisees were some of the religious leaders uh, in the city, and they weren't happy at this idea of people welcoming this person into their city as the king, the king who comes in the name of the Lord. There are all sorts of reasons why this might be the case. There was already a king in the city, King Herod, appointed by the Romans. 
Now you can imagine that would stir up all sorts of trouble for a, a rival king to be entering into the city. The Pharisees were, uh, you know, had long struggled to have the rights that they had for the Jewish people in the Roman Empire to continue to worship their God alone without having to worship the Roman gods. And so any sort of you know, cause that might lead the Romans to take away that right was something they were very uh, precious to protect. But also we've seen the Pharisees have not agreed that Jesus was the king who comes in the name of the Lord. And so they think it's wrong for him to be proclaimed this way into the city. Not only wrong, but dangerous. Dangerous to people and their beliefs. If Jesus is not the king that they think these people think he is. And so they say to Jesus, teacher, take responsibility for this. Rebuke your disciples. Tell them that they're doing the wrong thing in welcoming you as the king. But Jesus is having nothing of it. He is the king whom God has sent to deliver his people from their greatest enemy. And so he replies to them in verse 40, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Jesus here is telling us that his arrival in this city is such a cosmic event that the earth itself would cry out if the people weren't there to proclaim it. Here is God in the flesh coming to dwell amongst his people, to visit the city which has the temple where God's spirit is said to have dwelt. Here is Jesus arriving in that city in this appropriate way for the Messiah to arrive. There ought to be excitement. There ought to be crying out that this moment has finally arrived, this moment that they had longed for and asked for in their prayers. If they kept quiet, Jesus said, the stones themselves will cry out. So then, as we uh, think about this week out from Easter, as Jesus is on his road to Easter, this uh, day that's often recalled as Palm Sunday in churches still to this day, we see Jesus making very bold claims about his authority, recognizing himself as the king and being proclaimed as such and not stopping his disciples from doing so. But what's interesting, of course, is that a few days later, Jesus will once again have a crowd around him. But this time they'll be crying, crucify him. What happens in Jerusalem over this week that leads to that moment of Jesus' crucifixion once again being led outside the city in five days time? Well, that's the journey we're going to explore over the next few talks. <music>